Hey, what's up everybody? It's James Malinchek here, founder of www.bigmoneyspeaker.com and I'm here with one of my old dear friends who's been a teacher and a mentor forever for me, Mr. Jack Canfield. Jack, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Appreciate James. it. We're here at my house in Las Vegas and we're going to shoot a little bit of pool and uh, I'm going to interview Jack and you may know Jack from his mega best-selling book series, Chicken Soup for the Soul. And how, many, how many copies sold now? 125 million in 47 languages. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You, you, one of the things you always have to do is you've got to tell your story at the beginning of any presentation, any teleseminar that you're on, or if you're in a one-to-one -one selling situation, because you've got to understand that you're not selling a product or service. You are selling you first. And there's three keys to your story. It's mess, turning point, success. So mess, turning point, success. And the reason you have to have the mess and talk about your mess of where you started and how you didn't have what you may be blessed to have now is because that instantly causes a connection with the audience. That, wow, you know, she's just like me. She didn't uh, wake up one day and just have it. She wasn't born into it. She went through some struggles that I may be experiencing. That's one of the things I always teach the speakers. Well, one of the things that I think beginning speakers make a mistake about, they think they have to look perfect uh, mm -hmm. so that people People yep. think, oh, their life's perfect, so I want what they have. Yep. But it makes you feel so distant from the audience, they can't relate to you. Yep. Lisa Nichols, who was in The Secret, sure. you know Lisa, she has a wonderful phrase. She says, your mess is your message. Mm -hmm. Most people try to hide their mess, mm -hmm. that they were a drug addicted, or they came from the ghetto, or they were divorced three times, or whatever. But as soon as you say, I, you know, I, I, I'm on my third marriage. Now, I, <laughs> Right. There's a charm, we're done, right. I think. <laughs> the first one was five years, second one was 20 years. Uh, and, and I used to feel very embarrassed to talk about that. Right. You know, I'm supposed to be the self-development you know, development right, expert right. in my third marriage. And the fact is, every one of those marriages had its life cycle, and they were good, and then they ended. But I used to be embarrassed to say that, mm -hmm. you know, because well, why are they going to trust me if I can't even make my marriage work? Right. And every time I say, you know, I've been divorced, half the audience goes, oh, me too. Right. You know, I understand. And even when I say third marriage, you know, at least 10 people come up and say, I'm on my third marriage too. And then they relate to you. They feel connected mm -hmm. to you. And, and I find that when I do uh, workshops and we actually do exercises where I ask them to talk about something that's not working in your life, a difficult or troubling situation, mm -hmm. something you want, you can't manifest, I always share mine first. Mm -hmm. And then people go, oh. And at the end of the workshop, people will say to me, that was the most valuable thing you did. Mm -hmm. made me realize, okay, there's a shot for me. I, mm -hmm. If you can do it, I can do it. Absolutely. And that's, that's what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's mess, turning point. What was the turning point? Now, if, you're, if you are offering books and CDs uh, or a coaching program, um, you should want to talk about the turning point being that when you started to understand self-improvement and working on yourself and reading books and listening to audios and going through coaching programs, if that's what you're going to offer at the end of the presentation, you have to talk about that as being one of your turning points if it's a true fact. And then the success of what you have because you started to invest in yourself and go through the seminars. Because what happens, and you do that in the very beginning of a presentation because what happens is fast forward all the way over here on a timeline when you get over here and now you offer your books your CDs and your coaching programs it's in their unconscious mind that that was the turning point for you and therefore this could now be that turning point for them if they invest in your information so there's a whole psychology on how this works here when you're putting a presentation together where you want people to invest see I am not a big believer Jack in selling stuff I'm a big believer that make people come to the inevitable conclusion in their minds that they need more of you. You gave them great value, they relate to you, and now they want to take more of you home. Absolutely. You know, so mess turning point success for your story is crucial. It's crucial for your success if you want more of your great information going home with them so that you can enrich their lives when they need it. They don't need help in that seminar room. They need help when they get home and they're out on the street and they're by themselves because in that seminar room they're in a safe environment. They need help when they are outside of there when they're home and they have nowhere to turn. That's where they turn to your coaching program, your books, your CDs, your uh, seminars, whatever it is that you offer them.